right, guys. <laughs> My girl is here. So if you guys have been following me since last year, my client here came in. Say hi. Hi. Um, because her hair was severely broken um, from a color service that she had gotten. And man, just her hair feels so different. <laughs> it was so stringy when we, when we first, first visited this hair. She had hair that was so short in the front, it was broken in the back. It was just all over the place. And to see her hair now, how healthy it feels, how beautiful it looks. She has length, you guys, like length. And the crazy part is we're about to cut it off again. <laughs> she wanted something different. And now she's gotten to the point where she's like, listen, it doesn't have any shape. I need something. So we are going to give her a haircut. And... Today's products that I used on her was our Elite Silky Line. It's nice and lightweight. If you notice, her hair texture is different. So most people are more concerned that it's going to be too heavy. Um, you know, it, it might weigh the hair down. Nope, not at all. Not at all. So we are going to do some framing of the face. We're going to take some of the weight off of her ears so that she has um, more exposure of her ears, more exposure of that beautiful face of hers. So we're going to do all of that today. Blow her out so you guys can see the finished style and then go from there. So I'm gonna do a little bit of razoring and then I'll do the rest with shears. The water dripping, you okay? Mm, yeah, I guess I am. Yep, so we're gonna do a little bit of razoring and then we'll finish out with shears. I'm also going to use my texturizing shears. Texturizing shears are these babies here. To take some of the weight off the back of her head. You can't use texturizing shears on everyone because it can leave gashes in the hair, but this is a great way to remove some of the weight and also to give that feathering effect. You can also do the same thing by using notching with your shears. Some people like it. If you notice she has some curly, her, her textures or pattern is a lot curlier than normal. So I didn't want to use my shears, but you can use them for this purpose as well. And see how it takes some of that bulkiness off? That's what we're going for. So this was the before side, and this is the after side. So if you notice, on this side, the hair lays a lot better, not so bulky. On this side, she has a lot of weight. So that's what we're removing. When we were talking just a moment ago, she's like, this was just October mm -hmm. when we first encountered this journey with her, right? And look at where her hair is today. 
and she's embracing her gray. So technically, she has not colored her hair since. Mm -mm. That tells you just in the top how much her hair has grown because the blonde that was left is way up here. She has about an inch of blonde left. The rest is all her actual new growth. start here and this is where I'm going to use my razor so you guys can see where I am her hair is wet is not giving me what I need. And this is why I tell hairstylists, like, if you are not comfortable with your shears, please get comfortable with them because not always the razor is going to give you what you need. I feel like sometimes the razor is just like a, a cop-out. It's good for what it's good for, but I feel like it's a cop-out. Like, you don't actually get to learn real hair cutting skills. What I'm doing right now is over directing the hair because I do want to keep some of the length and I do want to add some texture towards her face, but I don't want to make it blah. We're already at blah. So she wants movement. Mm And as I go up, my graduation of my cut does as well. So you should be able to see her silhouette of where we're going. So if she was wearing her hair back, it's supposed to go back, down under, and out. 
That's your profile. And then you'll see what it does to the face once we get to the face. Last portion of the yellow is coming out today, right? Mm -hmm. Because the the yellow is coming out today. You want to cut it? I mean, if I see. Well, I'm cutting most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still there? No, no, not after I cut it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You literally have it like on the actual tip, but I think we're gonna end up cutting that part off too. Okay. It's less than a centimeter at this point. Mm -hmm. Thank you, it's a beautiful haircut.
there's her silhouette. So the way a silhouette should work. So you should be able to see texture on either side of the head. Okay. So you can do one of two things. You can leave the way the hair the way it is, and then blow it out and curl it, which I can't stand. Or you can mold the back, which is what I'm gonna do, so that it all lays really nicely. If she came for a haircut, she needs to look like she got one and not leave out of here in the curly state that she came in, unless that was by choice. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Elite Silk Wrap Comb. As you guys can tell, she has nice curly textured hair. And I'm gonna mold her in the direction then I'm gonna style her. Okay. If you guys see her sides there, nice and smooth. If the cut is right, it will be proportionate all throughout. Now, if I wanted to wave her, I could. Like such. Now before her hair starts to wave back up, I'm gonna go ahead and put some end papers on the back of her head. Just like that. Tell me what the end papers do. What do they help with? Lay the hair down. Absolutely. They work just as wrap strips would, but sometimes wrap strips can disturb your mold. So the end paper method works too. For her front, I'm just going to kind of push it forward and bring her sides to the back. Leave out some sideburns. I'm not going to put any end papers behind her ear because that is the hardest place to dry. You guys can actually see her cut. She can actually see her cut. Yeah, I saw it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's gonna go under the dryer to dry. Okay, and then there will be a part two to this video so you guys can see the finished style. So she's gonna dry. When I come back for part two, please don't forget to jump on. If you don't know when I'm on part two, that means that you're not subscribed to my channel. So you definitely want to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you're able to know when I'm on. I'll see you guys in part two. Oh.